So let me just kind of zoom in here, start with this. Um, so I was thinking about um, the possible uh, the possible stories I could um, that I could get from the prompt. And I started just kind of scribbling things out. Um, and it was kind of on the nearest scrap of paper, which happened to be like a utility bill. Normally I try to be a little bit more organized, but sometimes you just got to you know, draw on what you have. Um, so anyway, so I started scribbling some ideas out and uh, I really love drawing frogs and toads. Um, so anytime I have a chance to, to draw them, I generally do for just like fun drawings on the side. Um, there's these uh, these toads called Suriname horn toads, which I just think have a hilarious shape. Um, they they're like a caricature already by themselves. <laughs> and so um, anyway, so I, I was kind of just sketching things out and um, came up with, uh, you know, I thought it'd be fun to do like a, a toad in a little turtleneck professor teaching a class. Um, and so from there, I was like, oh, man, it would be so funny if uh, well, first of all, the in this class, the toads are like eating flies and stuff and taking notes. And I was like, oh, it'd be so funny if it was a fly teaching a class of toads, um, the, you know, some math or whatever. And I love coming up with like little puns or one-liners. And I was like, it'd be funny if it was, uh, you know, the caption was, you know, his math students were calculating their next move. And so anyways, uh, just kind of funny little ideas like that. But um, I kept sketching some things out and, um, uh, basically just rough compositions. So this is like super crusty, like really rough sketches, but this is where I try to start. So I'm not getting too married to any ideas. Um, and let's see. Okay. One sec. And um, I decided to kind of like push one of these ideas forward a little bit. Um, and actually I, I did a little research and I, I'm showing this whole process because I actually ended up taking this somewhere else and going with a different character, but I wanted to show you kind of how um, my mind kind of thinks as I'm going through any given prompt. Um, also, I don't have the chat up. Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody's chat. Uh, okay, wait, how do I get to the chat? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, all right, so um let's see so generally in my workflow or my design process um i'll start with kind of a more i'll start with the research phase right and then do some sketches um, but since this is coming from kind of a more vague prompt i ended up doing sketches first in order to find the character and then i kind of defined it from there um, so this is some of the research that i was doing i was trying to figure out what kind of character he could be um and i thought maybe kind of a goofy little professor um, like some of these in here, there's uh, Mr. Mr. Escalante from Stand and Deliver, which was more of a physical comp or physical reference, um, whereas his personality isn't quite what I was going for. I was kind of trying to find like this awkward, timid, timid type character, uh, like Michael Sarah or what's this guy's name again? DJ Qualls from Man in the High Castle or Kit. And of course, the teacher from uh, from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, anyway, so they have this awkward weirdness. So ultimately, um, I decided to go with something else, like I said, because I felt like this, there's too many, there's so many characters and, um, you'd just be kind of watching me struggle with the composition and, and things like that. And so I felt like maybe I could go another direction. So I wanted to show you where, uh, my next sketch led to, and I felt like this might be better for the time that we have today. Um, just so that I can actually get into some designing. So I thought, well, what if it's a teacher and she looks kind of like a fly, right? And maybe there's like a fly flying around her. She's a super old, like dusty lady. Um, and so that's that's what I want to talk about today um, is kind of the, the design principles and then also some of the thinking behind her design. So let's see. Thank you, Jacob Trump, for your compliment. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. So, um, sec, let me just go through. Okay, so yeah, for the sake of time, I, I did kind of this research phase and some of the, the sketching phase beforehand. Um, maybe at some point we have a much longer time period. I could go through the whole thing with everybody, but since we only have a little bit of time, I wanted to just kind of get that up 
get that uh, kind of developed first. Um, so I was thinking um, of basing this woman's design on um, the shape of a fly, right? And so uh, I'm taking a look at flies. Maybe I'll bring in an image of a fly. Mm -hmm. One sec. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, so we've got this fly here. And this is kind of the thing I love doing most in design is finding these, these correlations and, and finding kind of funny things. Um, and so I'm, I'm taking a look at the posture. I'm taking a look at the eyes. Um, I'm taking a look at, you know, the other elements of a fly, right? So I've got like, it's trying to imitate um, the wings, right? With her, the way her hands are kind of, uh, you know, scrunched up like that. And it, it, it's kind of imitating that shape of a wing. Okay. Um, so those are things that I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. And then also her mouth. I was like, oh, that'd be funny if it looked kind of like the, the fly's little mouth sucker thing. Um, and so things like that can kind of add a little bit of interest and depth to your character. Um, even though in the end, sometimes these kinds of things might be lost on the audience, at least consciously. Um, but the, these are the things I think are really interesting about character design and that can add a little bit more depth and nuance to your characters. Um, so this, this research is kind of fun. Um, another thing is the, the turtleneck aspect, right? As I was thinking about this um, with her posture and everything, there's actually uh, what's called turtleneck syndrome. Um, let me look it up again. So turtleneck syndrome, which is when people stick their head forward and there's actually this chart that shows, let's see, oh, here it is. Okay, I'll bring it in here. There's this chart that shows, you know, when you lean your head forward, it actually increases the weight that your, your body is carrying significantly, right? So when you put your head forward, you're carrying like 40 pounds versus like 12 pounds. Um, anyway, so that, that's another thing that I'm considering in this design. All right, so, now I've gone over kind of my thought process, the research. Um, start diving into kind of the, the, uh, the designing. Okay. So a few things, um, I'll just start kind of drawing here. And, um, you know, I've done like gesture drawing and other kinds of teaching online live, but I've never actually done, gone through my character design process. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be kind of fumbling through this maybe and, and making weird decisions, but I, I wanted to everybody to see kind of how I do it live. And this is the real thing. So um, you're problem solving and sometimes you have to kind of make a mistake and then course correct. And it's all uh, an important part of the process. So um, anyway, so let's start. Yeah, this, this line here is something that I'm really thinking about, right? There's, there's, kind of the squash and stretch principle. Um, and so I, I'm stretching across the back and then there's, everything's kind of squished on this side, right? So you get the squash through the stretch and then kind of the squashed um, part right there. And if anybody has questions as I'm going along, like please feel free to let me know. I'm actually gonna switch my brush. Sometimes it's all about finding the right brush, you know? Once you get into this final stage. And sometimes it takes me a while to find a good brush. Like um, you can have a good design, but um, when it comes down to the actual line work, uh, it doesn't carry all the weight, right? If you can have the best line work and if it's a bad design, it's not going to carry it, if that makes sense. Um, but it definitely has value. Okay, so right here, I'm, I'm thinking about the tapering of shape. So in my sketch here, I've kind of uh, made this a little noodle, right? Where it's it's uh, even, right? There's no tapering. It's kind of just um, even all the way down. And so something I'm wanting to do instead is taper that a little bit. So it gives movement to the shapes. It uh, gives a little bit more visual interest. a little bit of thickness to that wrist or to the, to the fabric there. Um, so 
something I'm also thinking about um, are straights against curves, right? So sometimes in this case, you'll have a straight on one side, right? You're, you're, you're contrasting the curve with the straights on the other side, so straight, straight, and then the curve. Um, sometimes it's a, a curve, right? Like on her back that then goes into a straight. Um, and this kind of structure you'll want to be pulling into your design, right? So if it's all curved or it's all straight, it's going to feel um, a little bit jarring. So you want to, or, or either jarring or a little bit bland, right? So everything's round. It's going to start to feel a little monotonous. So you want to vary your design by pulling in some straights and uh, with along with the curves. Um, now there's... The, the way you apply that may vary depending on the subject, right? So I'm, I'm thinking about this woman's arm. Um, and normally, in fact, Walt Stanchfield talks about this in his book, um, his books, Drawn to Life, right? Where he, he talks about how often the part that's being pulled, right? Um, you generally have that rigid straight line, right? Like on your arm, you've got the straight bony structure and then on the inside maybe you have a little bit more muscle um so you have those curves with the flats uh, with the straights on the other side in this case where there's maybe less structure there's less uh you know her she's, her muscles aren't quite as toned um it might fall right and so there's there's straights on this side and then it kind of falls with gravity right and so i'm actually reversing this you know this observation so it, it totally depends. There's not a one right way to apply straights and, and versus curves. Um, it all just kind of depends. Hopefully I'll be able to get through this drawing. <laughs> I'm kind of talking uh, more than drawing, but so yeah, I'm, I'm pulling in a straight here. And so you kind of have to experiment with what feels best, right? And I may look at this a little later and think, oh, I actually want to, you know, want to change some things here. I just kind of want to keep a little bit of curve there. Okay, I'm trying to give a little bit of weight to this here, right? So instead of it just being perfectly curved, oops, um, you can think about what's the weight of it, right? That conveys gravity and weight a little more than this does, right? Um, and so something I'm thinking about. Okay. I'm also showing some tapering with these, uh, with her pants, but um, honestly, flare pants are just, just fun in general. They're kind of, I think design-wise, they just look really cool. So I always try to work those into my drawings if I can. Okay. I'll notice with the, a lot of old ladies, they, they'll, their legs are, are like sticks, basically, you know, and so... I'm trying to also just pull from life in general from people that I know. Okay. Another thing uh, in terms of tapering, right? Sometimes it's not even just specific shapes. It's the relationship of shapes to each other, right? So I'm thinking about the direction of this foot, the direction of this foot, right? Trying to break parallels where possible, unless, it, you know, it's a purposeful thing. If you think about Secret of Kells or, you know, other, other movies like that, um, Cartoon Saloon often does this. They have very purposeful applications of um, parallels, right? And so, but it's a design choice and it, it's it's um, their design language. And so they, they apply it very purposefully. It's not just kind of random haphazard use. And so all rules can be broken if done with, um, you know, if done intelligently. Um, let's see, it would be great if you talk about the shape language process. Okay. Yeah, so so shapes here. I, I talked a little bit about kind of the the shape based on this fly, right? Um, there's kind of this this round um, forward arching shape, right? Every shape, um, you know, has has um, something that it conveys, right? So there's a language, right? So everything in language 
the grammar, the syntax, the, the punctuation, it all has a purpose. And so the same thing can be said about shapes. Um, depending on how you use the shapes, um, it will convey a different emotion generally in the audience. Um, and again, not always, right? The, the context matters. Sometimes triangles can be, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you have to use a triangle for a, a villain or you have to use a circle for a really, you know, friendly person. Um, I'm actually thinking about the character from, um, it's like Toy Story 4, I want to say. I don't know how many they've done now. But um, the villain is like that really cuddly bear, right? And so it's kind of the the irony that makes him such a good villain. I think um, that he's so cuddly and yet he's this bad guy. Um, and same with, uh, say, oh, it's, I guess it's Toy Story as well. The Stinky Pete, he's kind of this round, warm looking um, villain character, which makes it more interesting and to have kind of that, con that contrast. Oh, from three. Okay, you're right. It's from um, Toy Story 3. Um, okay, yeah. So... So some one thing with shapes, um, I kind of mentioned this here, right? So where possible, you know, again, unless it's the design decision you're trying to use, um, trying to vary your shapes and give them movement, if that makes sense, right? You're you're trying to, um, for example, here, right? If you can find an apex or a peak to that to that shape. It can make it more interesting, right? So something like this versus something like this, right? There's kind of a movement. It's like it's either being pulled um, or being, you know, pushed from up here or, or from below it. Um, so, you know, things like that can help to give your shapes a little bit more appeal, um, so they don't feel quite so static and gridded out. And so, let's see if I can. Same thing here. Actually, see what it feels like to kind of push that shape a little bit more. Turn off that layer there. Okay. You know, it would actually be let me duplicate this. See what it feels like. Be kind of funny. So I'm noticing these hairs on the fly, right? Wonder if how that would feel to make her hair kind of spiky. <laughs> Sometimes old ladies will have spiky hair. Let's see. Okay. Let's look at the right shape. Sometimes it will like spike up, but then also sits flat and facing down on their face. <laughs> now, if this is a real character design assignment, I'd take a lot longer to do this and um, would probably pull in a lot more reference as well. Um, especially if it's more of a main character, um, there'd be a lot more of a robust uh, research process. And this character to me feels more. It feels more like the teacher from first Bueller's Day Off, maybe kind of a funny one note side character, um, unless of like a main character. And there's kind of a balance there too. You want your characters to feel like they have the appropriate amount of screen attention. Um, if all your characters are um, feel iconic or they, if they all feel like they're screaming for attention, it will kind of take away from the main character. And, um, and so you're, you're wanting to, you're wanting them to kind of blend in the background a little bit if they're more of a, a background character. Okay, let's see. Something I'm thinking about here is trying to find, I don't know if I'm liking this. I'm gonna, I think I kind of like the flat hair instead. I'm just gonna, this. Um, it's an interesting idea that I might, might continue to explore if I had more time. 